All right, here we are. Hi. Hey, Hi. everyone. We're back. We're back. For a new episode. I'm the cat with the most full litter box you have ever smelled or seen in your life. Wow. Oh, yeah. stinky. And stinky I'm the animal. actual litter box. Oh, my God. We always just two of us, just the two of us. I'm giving you shelter. <laughs> That's right. Shelter and litter. Shelter so you can use the bathroom accordingly. Oh it's lovely. I'm not a cat person, so I am not affiliating myself. Well, with this. we're offended. Mm-hmm. Even though I did an episode once about it. Yes, you cats did. To be in the audition. I prefer dogs. Me yeah, too. Me too. Woof, woof, as, woof, woof. as Mark is yeah, holding here. Gonkaroo right here yeah, for you. For those of you watching, you can see him say hi, Gonk. Uh, hello. Woof. Hi, Wolf. Woofy. Woof, woof, woofy. He's like, whoa. Okay. So last week we talked about revenge, which it was such a great episode, Mark. Thank you. I yeah. really enjoyed that one a lot. I know. Um, it was good. So my question this week how well. Do you deal with rejection? It could be any kind of rejection. Like, so for me, for example, if I like apply for a job or audition for something and I work really hard and it's something I really want and I get rejected, Mm -hmm. like I'm the type of person that will just have a really good cry about it and I let myself be miserable and bitter for the day, Mm -hmm. like for 24 hours and then I like brush it off and move on. That's healthy. That's fair and healthy. Yeah, absolutely. There's some things that I still hold on to and have certain feelings about, but that's okay. Well, you're human. You know, I think everybody has things like that that you're like, fucking really? Fucking really? Yeah. Really? For me, just like on on the whole, I think I, I take it kind of personally rejection in in any sense. But I don't I don't hang on to it long term, but it hits me hard. Okay. You know? But then I'm like, oh, whatever. Fuck these people. They're clearly stupid. They are stupid. Yeah. Fuck them. Fuck them. Well, I think if any one or organization rejected me, I think there's something wrong with them. Yes, clearly. <laughs> there's something wrong with anyone well, who would reject any of us it's here. It normally has something to do with God. So that is true. God tells them. That's to, right. God told them to reject yeah, me. Yeah, they can smell but that like, you're unpure. But like, part of me wants to say, okay, you know what, like learn from it grow from it yeah and try again yeah but i think a lot of times there's corruption sometimes you're rejected because of corruption and, yeah and sometimes the rejection is like done really fucking dirty mm-hmm. yeah yeah absolutely like sometimes it can be personal yeah and those are the things that i hold on to yeah like when i'm talking in the sense of like an audition or a job or something like i give myself that like 24 hour grace period and then i move on yeah well you know something i always say to mark is that like you have to rely on people who are in a position of power to make a call and a lot of times the people who are making these calls aren't qualified themselves correct so you know it's really fucking tough because you really got to get lucky as to whether or not you're dealing with a fair person who right. is of sound mind, mm-hmm. who is actually going off of like, oh, yeah, you're good at this and you would be good for this because of X, Y, Z. Not like, oh, you're good at this, but like my friend is better. Exactly. You know, and that's the fucked up aspect. Well, I got rejected from a job once because the person, it came down to me and one other one other applicant after five interviews, oh, after God. five rounds, five, I remember five this. effing interviews. Mm-hmm. Where my resume was a hell of a lot better, and this person got it because they lied. Yeah, they, they lied. lied about one. I fucking hate thing. that shit. Yeah, and I found it's when I found this out. I'm, I mean, I'm still. This is like three years ago, and I'm still fucking pissed. Yeah, Mark about still it. is building the bulldozer. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna bulldoze. You're gonna bulldoze. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna bulldoze the shit. Yes. Yeah. Out of that bitch. Yeah, with my. Yeah, yeah I mean, I love it with my Honda Civic. Yeah, yes. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I we mean, love us a good Honda here at Bizarre Buffet. We do. Good cars and they're cute. I'm actually taking us back in time a little bit further than than Mark's episode. I'm taking us to the year 1984. 84. So the album Purple Rain was a hit. Oh my God. Purple Rain. Purple Rain. That has nothing to do with this story. So something that I, I, I learned is that actually this is the first time HIV was first identified. Really? Uh, yes. Wow. The first case was in 84. Yeah. And our BFF horny Ronald Reagan was living in the White House. Oh, of course he was. It's a shame he didn't get it. May you rot in the worst kind of hell, you piece of shit. And didn't we have like a heat bash? We had a heat bash about Nancy last episode. Oh, we, oh my God. We, we so did. Look, 
don't, you guys don't still like are on the menstrual cycle. So we yeah, are we like don't. kind of on the same menstrual yeah, cycle. Absolutely. The same bizarre buffet podcast menstrual cycle. Absolutely. So we find ourselves in Sunnyvale, California. Okay. At an electric company called ESL Incorporated. All right. Which stands for Electromagnetic Systems Laboratory. Wow. ESL is definitely easier. That's yes. what I thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the company is no longer standing. It was a technology firm that engaged in software design. They did systems analysis and hardware development. Okay. This guy, Richard Farley, who was a 35-year-old software engineer at the company, met this girl, Laura Black. She was a 22-year-old co-worker at the same company, and they met at an event in April of 1984. Richard was absolutely smitten and later stated that he immediately fell in love with her. Oh, yes. Sweet. Do we know where this is going yet? Do we know where this is going yet? Oh my god, obsessions. 1984 kissing. 1984, who could ask for more? I don't know, I don't know. Shall (laughs) I continue? Yes, Okay. I'm in. So, Richard starts leaving her letters and gifts on her desk. Oh, secret I don't know the specifics of the gift giving, but the one thing that kept popping up in my research that was mentioned multiple times was that he baked her homemade bread. Oh, that's it. HR issue. <laughs> Made for <laughs> it is absolutely. So I mean, what kind? I, I, I can smell it now. I love how made bread. So Laura had. Oh my god! Sorry, so horny for the homemade bread. Whoa. Laura did have some pretty strong boundaries because she was all like, no. (laughs) I don't want your bread. No, (laughs) no, no to his advancement. Good for her. Richard was not taking this rejection lightly whatsoever. Okay, so. This bitch fucking persisted. Oh, he was like, now you're getting three loaves a week. Was he a dick about it? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Richard. Oh, You were going to have to find out. Oh, God. And his bread. He actually started to take the nose as like a sense of encouragement to continue to try harder. Why do people oh, do this? It's a douchebag why, thing. Why do people like, and oh. And whole, uh, it's like her job. She's at work. Like, yeah. Let her make her money. That to me is like so bad. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Man. No. And he would do crazy things like call her desk every few hours to like check in. Did you try the bread yet? Well, like mm. my thing is like, hey, what's up? Um, Working just like you are? Yeah. yeah. Like what's the conversations mm. consisting of? Do you not like pumpernickel? Oh. I do. Do you like rye uh, bread? Yeah. What about mm, whole grain? But like also he got like really fucking weird and showed up at her aerobics class. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh, Laura. Oh, yeah, God. no, no. So Richard stalking got like super crazy. He actually provided false information to the HR department. <laughs> Through pretexting and was able to obtain Laura's home address and personal phone number. So he essentially made a fabricated scenario up as to why he needed this information. And that got through to HR? I mean, he got it through HR. It, HR is no. But, but you know something? Oracle. I feel like during a certain period of time, for some reason, I don't know what or why, but it was so much easier to be like, Hi, I need this person's address because I need to yeah. be met. Like, I don't know. It was fucking 80s, I guess. And yes, it was. <laughs> no, I agree with that. Because, like, he also not only did this with the HR department, but he did it with the custodial staff. Um, he got really friendly with them in order to get a copy of Laura's desk keys. So he could go through her personal belongings and get more of an insight of like her personal life. Oh my God. He had his hands on a bunch of confidential documents about her as well. Oh, this is fucked up. It is, it's really fucked up. There was one time where Richard actually called Laura and left a message asking her out on a date and Laura ignored it. She didn't answer it, nothing. This bitch still showed up at her house. Still showed up at her house. The fuck? She Mm. told him to go away. And he later said that that was proof that she was playing games with him and oh. that she wanted him. Mm. Like, he was very delusional. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, the it's... Textbook it's, delusional. Yes. Wow. So then this crazy shit happened where it was reported that one time he showed up to her apartment and was, like, playing with the combinations, trying to open up the garage door. Oh, my God. And even at one point, tried oh. to move into the unit next door to her to be closer to her. Whoa. Oh, my God. 
Richard. Oh, that's a lot of work. Rich, listen. And yeah, well, yeah. There's not a lot out there, and especially about her, because the thing that I was like really curious about was like, what was it that had Richard so intrigued by her? Yeah. But like, if you look at the pictures of her online, she was a very pretty young woman, and she was very put together, like very like '80s office oh, shoulder 80s pads, ladies. blazers, shoulder the, pads. Yes, the perm hair, the oh, earrings. Love her. It's love great. It. No. Oh, poor thing. Oh man, I, I love her, but I feel so bad for her because she actually had to move four times over the course of four years. Oh, Cindy James. Because, because of him. Because of each time she. He moved he somehow got a hold of her address oh my god hr Girl. i'd make a phone call to hr departments I, in the 80s she, high. I, would, I mean i don't know like if you could sue hr in the 80s but i mean think about it this way too i feel like lawyer up. that mm. was also a time where women weren't as valued in the workplace as mm. they are now yeah absolutely i think you know yeah i think that's a good point i think it was seen more as like ah. Oh, Whatever. Here's yeah. her address. Go stalk her, you fucking psycho. Exactly. Yeah. She got fed up like with his fucking bullshit. Yeah, of so, course. Like, by the fall of 1985, she actually reached out to the HR department and Richard was ordered to attend psychological counseling sessions. Mm. And although he did attend these sessions, the stalking did continue. <laughs> like it didn't fucking stop. Oh yeah, boy. He was like, I know for a fact that she likes me. Yeah, and then by like the following year, so spring of 1986, he was apparently threatening fellow employees and combined with his poor work performance because of his crazy stalking, he was terminated in May of 1986. Oh, wow, it only um, took And he years. worked for the company for like 10 years. He spent several months stalking Laura full time and mm. then found a job at the rival company of ESL. Okay. By 1988, Laura finally filed a restraining order against him. Well, I mean, I want to say good for her, but we all know so, how these things go. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you yeah. think four years is a very long time to live with something like that. Yeah. Like moving and being well, stalked. Cindy and, James. Yeah, yeah Cindy. Absolutely. Although we don't know, we think Cindy. No, we... <laughs> Agnes we, did we, it. We think, <laughs> we think Cindy was. Agnes had something to do I know, with but it. no, but but what Jen is saying is correct, though. In theory, if if Cindy's story is what it sh hopefully was, I don't know. Controversy. Throw back to a past episode. Yes, Cindy James. Dead meat. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But yes, what you're saying makes total sense because it's like. You know, the moving and, you know, some people really do experience this and stalking laws, don't, even till this day, aren't great. They aren't. There's really not much you can do if you're being stalked. No, but like, it's true because... Yeah. The restraining order did not prevent him from buying weapons during that time. Oh, wow. So he actually, like, he owned a variety of weapons. There was a revolver. There was a couple of them. There was a shotgun. Oh. But then, like, you know, talking about stalking in the workplace, mm -hmm. the next day, he actually left a package on Laura's attorney's doorstep he claimed in this package to have all this evidence that him and laura had this like long relationship together oh boy he had dinner receipts phone call recordings which i'm not sure how he was able to yeah i mean he could have he could have used but like he, he could have done a, a number of things to fake, fake it. Voice. He could have yeah. had a fake voice. He could have had a fake voice. You can get dinner with anyone. That could be with his mom, his yeah, sister. Exactly. exactly. So, and it was harder to prove in the yeah. 80s. <laughs> he also claimed in this package in writing that Laura kept a st secret stash of Coke. Okay. That they shared. It was at the eighties. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't be surprised, <laughs> but yeah. the attorneys were like, no, this, this is like... Yeah, you're, Lies. you're, like, be, you're this being guy's crazy. crazy. Town. There, was, yeah. there was nothing in there that was like concrete proof to like put this on Laura. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was like, I have a receipt that shows that two people ate dinner because there were two entrees. Girl, calm down. That doesn't mean it was her. So, yeah, the day before the court date, which was February 16th, 1988. Richard drove, apparently he had a motor home, so he drove it into the parking lot of ESL. And he claimed later on that he was waiting for Laura to leave work so he could convince her to rescind the restraining order. If she refused, 
he would kill himself. Okay, good. I would refuse. Yeah, I'll refuse. I'll watch you do it. And then, like, here you go. Bye. By 3 p.m., he loaded up his guns. He put on an ammunition vest, Mm. inserted earplugs, and put on leather gloves, walked into the building of ESL. Oh, shit. And began shooting while heading towards Laura's office. Oh. Was he shooting at employees? People. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, oh that's not right. Several of the employees were killed by his shots. Oh, that's terrible. Um, Imagine dying at work. Oh, God. All the pla- like, that's, that's like the last place you want to die. He gets to Laura's office. He opens the door, which she apparently slammed in his face. And he fired a shot through the door, which missed her. The second shot hit her shoulder and sent her unconscious to the floor. Oh, shit. But I am happy to say that Laura did survive this. Yes, Laura! Yes. Laura Go did girl. survive this. Oh, I my bet God. you she was wearing a um, shoulder pad. Oh, yeah. He pretty much kept the SWAT team at bay for five hours. and moving from room to room. Oh, so, boy. like, the SWAT team and snipers couldn't target him. Mm-hmm. Laura actually woke up. While this was all happening, she managed to, like, take care of, like, her wounds. She and other survivors that she found along the way were able to hide from him. Eventually, they, Laura and the survivors escaped. Richard finally surrendered to the police on the promise of a sandwich and a soda. (laughs) Oh, I mean, listen, a sandwich and a soda can get a lot with me. But I'm also not stalking and killing people, so. No, you're not. So... In the end, a total of seven people were killed. And then there were four more who were wounded, including Laura. And it was also reported that a total of 98 rounds were fired by Richard Farley. Holy shit. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a shit time. That's fucking insane. The next day, the court commissioner named Loris Kittle made the restraining order against him permanent. Okay. She stated and said that pieces of paper do not stop bullets. Yeah, they do not. No shit. And he already fucking killed all these people. And like, now it's permanent. Okay, well, now he's in custody. So, great job. Laura, like I said, survived. Um, she was hospitalized for 19 days. She continued to work for ESL after that. Wow. Uh, yeah. And apparently, Richard wrote her again when he was in prison and stated that she had finally won. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. So is this like a sick game that he enjoyed or? That's so fucking crazy. Yeah, exactly. During the trial, Richard Farley did admit to the killings, but pleaded not guilty. I wonder how that happened. I I wonder. So, yeah. So he said that he never planned to kill, but only Mm. wished to get Laura's attention or commit suicide in front of her for rejecting him. He should have just committed, you know, he should have killed himself. Yeah. He should have done it. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you know. For sure. Well, killing himself or seven people? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. But his attorney claimed that he was never a violent man and only Uh had his judgment temporarily clouded by his obsession with Laura Black. Oh, yes, because that's a reasonable okay, excuse. But e- even if that's the case, he still did it. Yeah. And they said, th- and he also argued that Richard Farley will likely never kill again. Likely. Likely. Oh, that's Not comforting. Definitely. Yeah. Likely. It's likely that he won't find the next yeah. Laura to be obsessed about to shove bread in her face and to viciously stalk. Bread, I know. Bread. What this, an odd choice. Right? Yeah. I mean, listen. I mean, it's. I think it's innovative. It's not like you know, chocolates or you know, flowers yeah, I mean, like this. Just trying classics, to be creative, but yeah, maybe right. he was like, oh, she's gonna, she's gonna be wooed by this because I'm um, eccentric. I don't know. I'm eccentric. I'm, the, bread. I'm the best bread baker yeah. in all. You don't of even Sunnyvale, fucking know. Yeah, you don't haven't even tried my bread. You don't Try know what bread my is. Bread, <laughs> you fuck- bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, it's a convincing case for someone like me. Well, it is. Yes. I will try the bread. She definitely won't be dating the listen, ginger I'll bread. Listen, I'll never, no. I'll never <laughs> say no to bread. I no. love, I love a good bread. Um, sourdough. Sourdough is Let one me of tell my you, favorites. He yep. would have won me over with some sourdough. Cheesecake factory bread is. Oh lit. my god, there, yes. there is some sort of possession. I love, I love they a put good cheesecake so good. Fact shit. They do. They have to. Even, so good. Even the brown one. <laughs> I, I love the brown bread. I know that's pumpernickel that we were talking about. Oh yes. Like, 
pumpernickel said I we were like talking yeah. about pumpernickel yeah I love a pumpernickel oh me too pumper. I love so good do you, you like know what I'm in the, I need like a good bagel I haven't had a bagel in a in a long time oh bagels are good or like a good breakfast sandwich on a bagel mm. i love a rainbow bagel yeah oh, yes. I, get, I, I get so excited they taste like nothing but they look nice yeah so, so, pretty. Pretty. so, pretty. so good maybe he should have tried rainbow bagels for laura yeah. maybe maybe he should have done that wrong bread he would have been ahead of his time probably yeah. so do you want to know how this all kind of wraps up hell yeah. yeah yeah the prosecution documented every step of the stalking they produced all the letters that he sent and documented his shotgun and ammunition purchase a week before the rampage. All of this amounted to extensive planning, which was evidence for pre-mediation. Wow. Finally, on October 21st of 1991, Richard Farley was convicted of all seven counts of first degree murder and he was sentenced to death. Good. Good. Due to California law, there were several automatic appeals, and as of 2009, Farley is still serving his time in San Quentin prison, and prior to the shooting, Richard Farley had no criminal record. Mm. Wow. None wow. whatsoever. Richie. Super clean. Wow. So yep. he just went off the rails. So certainly did i think if it wasn't her it would have been someone else a million percent well like that's the other thing and my question is like what is it like what makes these people stalk somebody and want to be so invested and infatuated with what is going on in their lives yeah i think the act of stalking in general is entirely fascinating i mean it's frightening but i mean fascinating not in a complimentary sense but in the sense of that it's bizarre. It is a very obscure um, obsession. And I can imagine it kind of falls in the lines of like people who are thrill seekers who like, you know, jump out of planes and yeah. love yeah. roller coasters yeah. and, yeah. you know, it's, bungee jump. It's like you get that thrill of possibly like getting caught. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Stalking to me, I feel like still like. There needs to be more studies or something there on has it to be. because you know it's stalking usually ends in terribleness. Like, look at this. Yeah. Like, innocent people were killed. Yeah, innocent people were killed because of a fucking stalker on a rampage. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's a um, wild story. There's, I have like a weird connection to a very similar story. One of my earlier jobs when I was like 21 or 22, I worked for a clothing brand. I'm not going to say which Nameless one. Nameless clothing brand. Yeah, um, clothing and, store. And I, I, it was like a side gig. I, we won't tell you which one. I won't no. tell you. No. I'll tell you if you give me money. Yeah, but, um, Which you can give to us on Patreon. Yeah, that's right. Patreon. But basically, um, in this clothing brand, I worked part-time in one of the stores. And a few months before I was hired... One of the associates, she broke up with her boyfriend. He wanted to be with her. And he kept asking over and over again for her to take him back. And she said no. And he ended up showing up at the store with a gun. Wow. And said, if you don't take me back, I'm going to kill myself. Just like this. Oh, my God. And she said, okay, well, I'm not going to take you back. And he blew his brains out in the store. Yeah. And I had no idea that this happened when I, like, because this happened a few months before I was hired. Okay, so this had, like, you weren't physically there yet. I wasn't there, I wasn't employed, and no one talked about it. And that store eventually closed. And I was there, you know, on the last day to close it down. And I was like, oh, what happened to so and so? And they were like, oh, she just, like, you know, dipped out. Do you know? And they were like, you know what happened to her, right? And I was like, no. And then I found out Her that story. Her his brains out. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm glad that he did it to himself yes. rather than someone else. Well, yes, so. absolutely. These men are fucking disgusting. Mm-hmm. Well, exactly. Mm-hmm. Trash. Yeah, absolutely. we've been watching a lot of, like, a lot of the docuseries and movies that we've been finding and streaming have been, like, a lot of stalker-related stories. Yeah. Which, like... 
I've just been really just fascinated on like kind of diving more into that and like the mindset behind why people do it. Yeah, a million percent. Um, I it's it's fascinating. It, it, is. Re- it, it truly is. It is. And I mean, what a great story and topic and a terrible story at the same time of for you know obvious reasons on each side, right? I'm just glad that Laura survived. Me too. I am too. But, I was, uh, when I was like reading this, I'm like, please survive. I know. I wonder what she's up to nowadays. I know. I know. There wasn't a lot out there about her. Yeah. Yeah. She probably has changed her name. I'm assuming maybe. That company though, they better have given her a damn good uh, I mean, but I'm wondering, or, like, like a promotion or something. I'm wondering if ESL is no longer standing because of this incident. Like, I mean, did it's it, possible. It, yeah, definitely. I don't see like longevity wise no like you know i mean she went back to work there so maybe they lasted a decent amount of time but i don't know do you work at esl do you know somebody who did no yeah let us know you can message us at bizarre buffet on instagram facebook absolutely or you can message us on patreon where we will do some really cool things for you and you can see cool stuff subscribing to patreon helps us because to keep our podcast running it does cost money it does so for time time energy efforts beauty beauty Um, yes three dollars a month gets you a postcard postcard a pin a pin that i made by mark toriello absolutely anything we publish to patreon be it bloopers deleted content absolutely published content and then for how much a month uh for ten dollars a month ten dollars a month you get all of that and a blindfolded drawing by all of us by the three of us yeah we'll each do one that you want and you get a video shout out yeah and you'll see us doing the drawing and then also we do have a youtube so if you're listening you could actually watch us on youtube at bizarre buffet what's up girls and boys hi and if you're watching us then everyone else if you're watching us and you're tired of Looking at our beauty. Yeah. You can listen to us on any yeah. podcast. If it platform. turns you on more to listen Spotify, to audio. Apple Podcasts. Yep. Absolutely. And, and leave sure a review on Apple Podcasts. Leave a review. It helps. Give us a like. Yeah. Rate us. Subscribing yeah. helps a lot. It does. it does. And we have a website, which is bizarrebuffet.com. That's right. Where everything is housed from yes. our filthy, filthy, filthy mouth. So... Yeah, um, I guess until next time. <clears throat> I'm the ESL headquarters. And I am the Netflix TV series, The Great British Bake Off. Fuck yes. Featuring bread. Bread. And Head. I'm the guy that stalked Bjork because I'm wearing a t shirt oh, of Bjork what a good and she was being stalked by the guy that saw Full her. circle. Oh God, full full circle. fucking I, circle. That's a no, good story. I'm Bjork. Shit. I'm, I'm Bjork. Now. Oh my God. Oh God. Oh yes. God. He's Bjork. Oh my God. We're all Bjork. We're all Bjork. Bjork. We all are Bjork. Don't ever stalk me. <laughs>